All right, guys. So I'm here with one of my students, a really good friend, DC. So congratulations, congratulations DC. I like you, the student of the month. You know, you haven't been showing up very <laughs> lately, but you know, show up a couple of times. Thank you. And since I don't have a chance to, uh, you know, get you here very often, so today is a, you know important day. So uh, the, the reason of this interview is to. Uh, no, get to know people, get to know about you and uh, what the reasons you uh, started Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and you know what how Brazilian Jiu Jitsu actually helped you in your career and helped your family. Okay, so let's start from um, from a long time ago. So when did you join the academy? Tell me a little bit about that because if you guys don't know, but this is one of my first maybe my first student here in St. Clement. So tell us about that. Uh, well, uh, 2005, uh, I was coming back from Iraq, or came back from Iraq at a tournament. Uh, I had made friends with uh, the guys from Jiu Jitsu Pro Gear, and uh, they pretty much kept on telling me about joining Jiu Jitsu. And uh, coming from uh, Iraq, I, I had gotten into uh, many fights. So me being the size that I am, and with equipment, uh, for me it was very important to start doing a, a martial art that. Uh, had a lot of uh, ground fighting. Uh, I understood and I had the basics of a stand-up, but ground is where I was the weakest at. So my friends and one of my old uh, instructors that worked for a jiu-jitsu pro gear and the owner kept on telling me that you're gonna open a school in San Clemente. Uh, I lived in Oceanside, so uh, we kept on talking and um, you ended up telling me that where you were at, you gave me a call, I came out and uh, at first you told me just to stop by, but instead I brought a key and uh, at that point, I was, I was hooked onto it. So, right. and then my family after that, my whole family. Yeah, if you guys don't know, uh, DC just, you know, he lives in Oceanside, so every time he's on the mat, you drive, uh, how long sometimes, like in, in average to get to the school? Anywhere from 25 to 45 minutes. 25 to 45 minutes. And, uh, all right, so you joined the school in 2005, and, you know, you, you also, you know, enroll your whole family, you know, so how was this experience, you know, because not a lot of people have the chance to train with their family members, you know, and that was been a long time since that happened, you know, and how was the original experience, you have like uh, your kids or blue belts now, including your wife, so tell, tell us about that a little bit. Uh, with that, it was, uh, for me, I've always had the the, um, the responsibility as a parent and a husband to make sure that my family's trained. Just like you train your kids to look when they cross the street left and right and uh, dial 911. The very basics is, uh, you know, their kids being able to defend themselves. We all know that most of the fights are going to end up on the ground. So if they understand the, the basics, the fundamentals, and even being on the mat, they're able to understand and uh, the mindset. Uh, you'll see some kids nowadays, they'll cry and whatnot, but they're better off than the kid that's never trained, that's never done nothing. They're able to protect themselves just by uh, rolling on the mat and understanding the fundamentals. Yeah, and why do you think, because you're telling us here, okay, them, uh, that most of the fights end up on the ground. What makes you believe that? Because I believe that too, but I'm saying like you're another point of view, and you know, you're a guy that's being in wars and, you know, have lived your whole life in, in uh, serving the country. So why do you think, like, what's your experience? What did your experience uh, tell you about this kind of uh, like regular fights and situations that you're in danger with a physical, uh, in a physical fight? Uh, most fights that are obviously street fights. It, it's, uh, they're by surprise. They're not by, uh, very rarely are you gonna be staying up against somebody and they're gonna attack you. Most of the times it's gonna be by surprise, especially for uh, females or not, it's gonna be by surprise. They're gonna take advantage of them, more likely overwhelmed, the individual's gonna be a lot bigger. Uh, again, more for the kids, more for the women, only because it, it's, uh, as the man, in, in, in a scenario in my mind, thinking my mom, about my wife and my kids, is that uh, they're gonna overwhelm them by strength and by size. So by that, is that's why I always think the overwhelming, the surprise, because uh, if it's more likely that you could face somebody, you always have the option to run, 
to get away uh, and to look for, for a, an escape route. But if you don't have no other option, more likely it's going to end up on the ground. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that too. And then uh, by observing uh, you know, fights through my whole life, you know, you can see even uh, today you have a chance to watch on YouTube, you know, there's fights over there. And, you know, it's my belief, my, my belief too that eventually uh, fights end up in a position that are contact and people go to the ground. So that's when Jiu Jitsu really, really helps. Uh, because, you know, if a fight never ends up in a contact, it was just like a striking thing. There's a lot of striking, uh, you know, striking uh, martial arts out there, which are really good. Okay, so back to our story here. Um, so we've been training. And so how do you think uh, the techniques you learned helped you, you know, in your duty, like in the, when you work uh, abroad, you know, uh, serving the country, and uh, did you ever have a chance to use anything? <laughs> yeah. Tell us the truth. <laughs> yeah. So uh, most of um, there's a high percentage of what we do uh, that you end up in a in a uh, in a fight when you enter a room, and a lot of times, whether it's the uh, the family member that they're scared for the life of another family member that go, that they go in there in the room, so a husband could be uh, trying to protect his wife, not knowing who, who comes in. But being the, the mature uh, individual that you're trained to, and as far as the unit I was with, it's uh, you have to make those decisions. And by those decisions is whether I'm gonna shoot him or if I'm gonna control him and take him down. So those decisions have to be done very quickly. And by assessing what needs to be done, which most cases I was getting uh, tugged from the side or they were grabbing my rifle. So by using the different techniques, by framing, by uh, doing the, the takedowns, and things of that sort. Uh, or if I trip as I'm stumbling and I fall on my back because I tripped over furniture or I slipped, I was able to gain control and uh, hold on to the individual or get in a better position as I got help from my friends. So in other words, listen to what you just said, I think maybe Jiu Jitsu can even save people's life, right? Because well, or either you shoot them or use Jiu Jitsu. So we decided to use Jiu Jitsu in that situation. If you didn't know, you probably would have to shoot them. Oh yes, right? definitely. All right, so, uh, well, good to know, right? So, um, yeah, I've been training for a long time, you know, you still haven't got to the black belt yet, but, you know, you probably the longest time, but you're always being in and out of the training uh, because I have to go uh, serve the country, you know, since I know you're always going abroad, sometimes seven months, and then come back, and then go another seven months, you know? This being something that uh, has been happening to you, and now you're like you know training, uh, being uh, uh, training the the, the, the soldiers, uh, pri you know, as a private uh, sector, right? Yes. And that's also taking some time. But you know, one thing I noticed is this: you never stop coming, even when you you know stop coming for a while. Uh, you know, you always you know always here. You know, you disappear six months to come back. You know. And a lot of people that probably listen to this and they have a little problem sometimes it's taking three months or, or sometimes like going injury here or something happened and it stopped coming and then all of a sudden this person disappears, you know, and they change their, their whole uh, goal. So what do you have to say to that person, you know, since you're a person that for me is very determined, you know, and uh, you prove by coming over here and, and you know, I have no, no doubt that one day you're gonna become a black belt, you know, because, you know, you're a very persistent guy. So what do you have to say to this, uh, that person that's what, probably watching this and, and is sometimes have this kind of, or have a problem just like yours or worse than yours, or sometimes not even as close to yours, that they have to overcome and sometimes they give up? Uh, for myself, uh, obviously a lot of injuries, whether it was from my training from overseas, from uh, or just being on the mat, uh, it's just the persist, uh, being persistent, and uh, always learning and looking at the little details. Uh, I've had uh, shoulder injuries where I just didn't even use that arm and worked on my other side, my weak side, as if I would have gotten shot in the arm and how would I fight through it? 
you know, or being on the street, being able to fight through it as if I would have been injured. But uh, as far as, I know some people look at the belt system and they're so determined to climb up that, that belt system. To me, every time you give me my belt, it's always been a surprise. And uh, I've never felt like I've been ready uh, for it. But uh, it, it seems that when you do get that belt, is now you have to step up your game even beyond that. Um, so for me, belts, I don't look at the belts. I look for the knowledge and, and the experience and knowing and understanding those those fundamentals, the, the, the easiest things of a technique, the details of it, um, the different individuals that you get as far as size and length, um, the uh, weight, because um, it's always, the technique's always gonna be a little bit different. You have to tweak it also with your injuries. So by always just looking at as far as a belt and just the one technique and trying to um, surpass everyone else just because you know a technique, you really never stop learning. As they still say, a uh, black belt never is a white belt that never gave up. Or well, the mentality of I have no belt, regardless of if it's a white belt, blue belt, purple belt, brown belt, I'm still learning from everyone that's uh, they had whether they started today or started with me it, it's uh, a consistent learning game and that's the one thing of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu you never start, stop learning uh, whether it's the basic fundamentals of things and those that's where um, I think as an individual you continue to grow is by understanding all those fundamentals and being able to teach somebody else or show them when they're having those hard difficult times okay yeah I completely agree uh, of course you know this come from a guy with a lot of experience. Uh, I actually, when it's, I tell my students uh, a lot is this, um, you know, my title is because I'm, I'm an instructor, you know, is a sensei, but my real title uh, is a student, you know, and I think, uh, you know, that's my most important title in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is to be a student. You know what I mean? This is, it goes in the same direction that you're telling me because, you know, it's something that's going to be always improving, always learning. Um, it almost like never ends. Like I learn techniques every single day, 28 years after. That's going to happen to you too, so let you know. <laughs> but it is what it is. And if yeah. you're watching the video, you know what I mean? That's the good news or bad news, I don't know. But 30 years from now, you somebody's going to show you something. How I never thought about that before. In little things, this is amazing. Um, so yeah, so you, what you have to tell uh, people over there, a couple, couple final words, and you wrap this thing up. Uh, once again, it's always a pleasure to have you here you. and uh, in the family. Uh, if you don't know DC, uh, you know he's, he's been here for a long time. His family trains too, and son Tony, Vanessa, and his wife Tess. So. Uh, Part of our family, so a couple of final one like final words. What you have to tell them about jujitsu, about life, you know, and maybe about here, but most important about life, jujitsu. Give me some word of wisdom. Uh, don't take don't take things for granted. Uh, you, you you assume that there's never going to be uh, that your kids never have to train or you don't have to train for yourself um, because the day that it does happen and you're not prepared, it's already too late. So by training. Come in here, uh, train with Paulo or the other instructors that are here. You know, even to understand the fundamentals, uh, you'll learn uh, basic things. And with that, you get surrounded by everybody else that becomes your family. And uh, not only that, for for your sake of survivability, but just the sake of your health too. So longer life with your family, which is obviously important to all of us, just as our family here is important. All right, guys, that's it. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you to see. Thank you. Us.